Hello and welcome. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, this stream is going to be a dub techno production stream, which means that I'm trying to create a new track or a new pattern. And yeah, I will do it with my new synthesizer, which I will show you when the countdown ends. Sandy asks, what is playing in the background? That is the recording of my home concert 48. You can listen to the whole set either on YouTube or on SoundCloud. I uploaded the set on SoundCloud as well. So if you check my SoundCloud link or YouTube, it's home concert number 48. I forgot to switch the other synthesizers on. Yeah, you wish that we would uh, have a signed mini moke for sale. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid that this is not possible. Last time I was giving away a CD. Um, I think that's all I can offer. I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, not a signed mini moke, no. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. You have two mini mokes, one from 97 and the 2016 reissue. That's interesting. I would love to hear how you compare the two to each other. I saw some interesting video comparison between a vintage model and the reissue. Uh, I would very much like to hear your opinion about the, the two. Of course, we can also talk about emulations and, and clones. Mm, I have the Softube uh, version and I would say that it's very, very close. Also because it really limits the set of controls and features to what the original Minimoke has. Also, probably Diva is, is also a very good uh, way to emulate the Minimoke and software. Mm, I have not played with the Arturia stuff much, to be honest. Um, I don't. I, I find the recreation, let's say for, for the Prophet synthesizer, much better from Yuhi than Arturia. So I kind of expected that the Mini Moog was also not super close to the original. So I, I didn't really try it. Thank you, Vasily, for your donation. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would believe that the keyboard is better um, today. I mean, I also have some some modern Moog synthesizers, uh, like the, the Matriarch uh, and the Sub-37. And yeah, the keyboard is... Um, oh, that was already the Mini Moog. Uh, the keyboard is not bad. I mean, it's it's better. I would say it's it's a better keyboard than the, the Roland Juno. Also very old synthesizer, but... Yeah, I believe that the new keyboards are of better build quality. Oh yeah, absolutely, Alex, that's totally right. Um, I usually start with the init patch anyway and uh, never use the internal effects of a synthesizer. They kind of um, overdo everything with the effects, usually, uh, with presets. 
So that's very important. Usually when I try to, to figure out if a synthesizer is good or if I like a synthesizer, I, I just start with the basic oscillators and play with the filter to, to get a little idea of how the synthesizer uh, actually sounds like and how it behaves. Yeah, good evening, everyone. I saw see that we already have a lot of people here on the stream. It's very nice. I hope you will not be disappointed to, to explain what I'm trying to do today. I got a new synthesizer, which I will show you in a minute, and then I will try to create a new pattern or new track from scratch. So it will not be an amazing dub techno live set. Please check my home concerts for stuff like that, but it will be more like trying to create a new track and since I don't have a MIDI interface for it and it's monophonic it will be a lot of work and a lot of sampling and, and twiddling around in, in, uh, in the DAW in order to make it uh, some piece of music so I hope you uh, yeah, would still enjoy the, the stream. Beringer Model D, what, what would that be? No idea what this actually is. Mm. No, I don't have a hydrogen. I tried it a few times, and I would probably have one if I didn't already have a lot of other wavetable synthesizers. So, I think with with the iridium in my setup, also uh, the mini freak uh, or micro freak before. Um, the virus, it's its kind of something I don't need another one of. But I believe that the Hydrosyn is a great synthesizer and um, also very affordable. I think the, the smaller one, I think it's called Explorer, is a very good uh, synthesizer for, for the price tag. Um, do you have this tune playing right now somewhere for sale? It sounds stupid, but I have no idea, I don't know. Uh, it's from Home Concert 48, uh, but I don't think that I released it. Um, maybe I should release it. Uh, yeah. Also on Bandcamp, you mean, probably. Yeah, but I don't think that, that I released the track somewhere. Like I said, the whole set is online on, on SoundCloud, but not... Not here. Do you have pets? Are you kidding me? <laughs> of course. There is Neptune, but Neptune is on, on the couch right now. Uh, I believe you will be joining us soon. Mm. Other than the cat, no. No, no, there's only Neptune. Neptune does not tolerate any other, uh, any other um, companions here in the house. All right, let me go to the other camera. Hello and welcome again. Um, today, I first need to get this cable to the other side. Today, I'm very happy to show you a very exciting new instrument that I got. And it is an original Minimoke. I'm not 100% sure when it was actually made. I think it must be between 74 and 78 because it came with some documents that I will also show you uh, in a second. Um, and according to, to these documents, uh, it must be somewhere between 74 and 78. Um, quick story how I got this. Um, I played a concert in, in Wuppertal uh, in, in a church, uh, an ambient live set. Uh, and a few weeks later, uh, one of the guests contacted me uh, and um, told me that that she had uh, a synthesizer at home and that I should come over and have a look at it. And I was like, okay, a synthesizer that sounds interesting. I mean, it can be everything. If someone who's not playing electronic music tells you, I have a synthesizer, it can also be a Korg M1 or whatever. Uh, but in this case, uh, it turned out that this was um, a Minimoke synthesizer. And also one in in an excellent uh, condition. The keyboard, however, has some problems. Um, if I play some notes for you. Uh, 
it sounds all very fine, but there are some keys that make uh, funny stuff, like this one. You hear that the tuning is not, not very stable, and also here. This one, or was it that one? Ah, it's better now. Maybe it, it gets better over time, not really sure. But what I want to say is that the overall condition of the synthesizer is is really fantastic. Um, and yeah, of course, I I still had to, to pay a lot of money for it. Um, yeah, I, so I didn't want to, to steal this synthesizer. And of course, everyone with internet today can, can look up the prices. So it was still uh, quite of an investment to make. Um, yeah, but... Like I mentioned before, uh, it's it's in a fantastic condition. Um, also, I can show you how how this is uh, going to work here. Yeah, you see that I have a tuner plugin down here. Um, I still need to retune it a little bit for for the temperature changes. Um, but you see that that over the octaves, it's it's quite stable. And also, if you go for for another oscillator. That is really fantastic how stable it is. I had to do some little recalibrating and tuning on, on the back side of the synthesizer. There are little little screws that you can um, adjust. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Let me show you some, some of the, the fun stuff. Uh, it came with it came with a whole bunch of um, of interesting um, things. The first thing here is maybe I can make it a bit like this so that you can see what's going on. It's called Sound Chart. It's it's like the presets book, all right. So you have different sound patches here. There was no patch memory, of course, so they had to to put something um, something here, which I find very very funny. Um, they have a lot of interesting orchestral instruments like the clarinet, the basson, whatever. But also, on the later uh, pages, they have some classic patches from, from records which have already been released at the time, which is also uh, a way to track down when this thing was, was built. Very interesting. Then, we have the operations manual. It is very very large uh, and has very much details in it um, also explaining all the the interesting things about how to, to synthesize a sound um, they also explain how the envelopes work it's it's really interesting to see all that um, really good good read and also some some empty patch sheets where you can draw in your your own sounds and this was very important for me because it explains how you can calibrate the oscillators, tuning the oscillators. It explains in detail how you should um, work with the oscillators. It's like three pages um, where it uh, exactly explains to you um, how, how the oscillator tuning process is going to happen. Um, and then there's an interesting receipt here. Uh, it does not really uh, tell anything too interesting. Um, there's no, no price here, only where, where the synthesizer was shipped to uh, originally, and also the serial number. Um, so if any of you has a deep knowledge into to the serial number stuff, it's 5680. The serial number is 5680, which is very funny, because the zip code of Wuppertal is 5600. So, you know, it's almost the same serial number as the zip code of the town where, where it was shipped to. Very interesting. Also, it mentions that the the weight is 20 kilogram. So this thing is absolutely uh, damn heavy. Then we also have this nice catalog here. It's only a three piece of paper sheet. With a mini milk, there is some, some kind of organ. Um, also a percussion controller, which I never ever saw before. Fascinating. And a synthesizer called Sonic 6 by Moog. I have never see seen that before. No idea what it actually is. 
but it seems to be another synthesizer from Moog. Then, of course, we have a German translation of the user manual. Also, here it says uh, March 74, which helps to track down when this instrument was built. Uh, this is a lot of text, a lot of pages with very small text, also explaining everything in detail, but in German. And then we have another user manual, also in German, Bedienungsanleitung, printed in wonderful typewriter stuff. Someone really put an effort into this one uh, and created hand-drawn schematics for, for the sounds, explaining everything. Um, it's really amazing how much, um, how much effort was uh, made into, into this. Also interesting to me is that uh, the distributor for West Germany was um, Dunacord. Dunacord. They also made um, echo machines, tape echoes. I thought that another company from Bonn was distributing the Moog synthesizers, but obviously at that time it was another company. Yeah. Let me have a look at the chat if there are any questions from you guys. Um, that's a short serial number. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, yeah, let me just get to, to one, um, one question that was asked uh, back to Ableton. Um, so... Yeah, we have Ableton today. Why do we have Ableton? I was using Bitwig quite a lot recently, but um, for today's stream, I want to use Ableton because it will be a lot of sample editing, cutting drum rack stuff today. Uh, and I've not really used that kind of stuff in Bitwig yet. Uh, so I feel much more comfortable in, in Ableton doing all this sample slicing things. And so I decided to do this today in, in Ableton All, also. Um, I have this tuner plugin and Bitwig doesn't have a tuner plugin and it was extremely um, valuable for me and necessary to have a good tuner because I needed to tune all the oscillators. That was my my um, my problem. So yeah, today we are going for, for Ableton, but I don't know where the journey will, will end. I promised to try and create a dub techno track today. And I want to start with like an atmospheric pad sound in the background. Of course, the problem is that the Moog synthesizer is monophonic. So when I play a note and add another one, nothing happens. So we can only play one note at a time. So what I will do is I will create, um, try to create a very mellow, Mellow sound, maybe only with one oscillator. Maybe we go to, to the triangle waveform. That could work. So this is just a very minimalistic and, and gentle uh, sound. Yeah, that's nice. Also, I will check for the tuning that we are in stable stable tuning um, and I will you see that I have um, I have an audio track here which just has my my incoming Moog signal uh, and I will duplicate this a few times and um, I will just record um, an 8 bar loop with uh, with a D and then stack it up you will see in a second uh, where I'm going with this Maybe we can play with the filter a little bit. All right, and now I will repeat the same thing with the second um, second track, this time with an F. in the 
metronome a little bit down. And of course, with with an A to have um, the the D minor chord. Also, I see that the A is falling a bit flat. Maybe I can adjust this with the master tuning. Yeah, that's good. Also, I like the idea to bring up the filter frequency not at the same time for oh, I was too late here it should be eight bars yeah perfect uh, and then as the last note I want to add a C so that we technically have a D minor seven chord in case you want to know Yeah, now we have a full chord with four tracks and I would like to group them. Also labeling is important. Uh, I call that background pad. And then I think we definitely need some effects. Um, I would like to have some delay. And also, we need a nice reverb. Maybe this one. Yeah, that could be interesting. Um, also, we can... I, I would just leave it like this. Uh, next thing, I would like to have some noise. here in why don't I hear anything on that track ah because I put this all down okay um so we need to to switch this on first and then we can have some noise Maybe we can use uh, the LFO for modulating this. This is maybe something worth explaining. Um, on the Moog, you don't have a dedicated LFO. What you can do is use the third oscillator and put it into... Um, into the lowest octave register and you can also switch off the, the key tracking uh, and then with the mod wheel you can increase the amount and if you activate this one here it says filter modulation um, then the oscillator will do something okay you can also make it to a different different waveform but you will always need to activate it uh, with the mod wheel yeah I just record some noise in here because with dub techno music you always need some some noise
maybe with a little bit more resonance. Yeah, I'm probably coming to back to this later. Um, not sure what I will do with this track. Uh, it could be a good idea to have um, some filtering going on because all the sounds from the Mini Moog always have this huge bottom end, uh, which we don't need in this particular case. So might be a good idea to have this going here and then later we will have some some sidechain compression going on all right so now we need to make it uh at least something uh similar to to dub techno we need to have a kick drum and how's that supposed to happen with uh with the moog synthesizer um let's see mm. we have a filter and this filter can go into self oscillation so when i switch all the oscillators off let me make this bigger you want to see the synthesizer not ableton um so when i switch all these off uh, we still can have a sound by increasing the resonance or how they call it emphasis and then we have this very nasty sound which is almost like a sine wave uh, and if we enable the keyboard control we have pitch tracking and as you can see due to the perfect calibration work that i did spending a whole evening the key tracking is also perfect for for the octave range so in order to get a kick drum i want to use the the um what is it called? The amount of the envelope. Um, yeah. I still wonder why this is so so high. It should be a bit a bit deeper for my taste. Let me record a few uh, a few sounds here. We don't need the metronome because Maybe like this. So what I'm now doing is I'm creating um, a drum rack. Where was the drum rack? It was a while <laughs> with me and this, this Ableton. Ah, it's not in the instrument selection. Okay. Uh, and here I will just insert um, that freshly sampled um, guy here. 
and with the keyboard next to me that you don't see, I can now try to find a good spot. Also, I think this needs to be a bit louder. I think it's a bit quiet. Um, ah, now we are clipping. I think I need to have tune up my headphones. Yeah, I think I want... Yeah, this one is nice. This one is really nice. Let me take this one. Yeah, that's good. Um, so here I'm now trying to program a quick pattern. Oh, that doesn't sound good. It's cut off. We need some release. Um, and what I always like to do is to have the same. You see, I just copied that over here. To have the same sound, but with a little um, uh, is is it again my favorite Ableton bug? It's so amazing. You see, once you switch the filter on, the sound is just completely gone. Uh, it should filter something, but it doesn't. It's just a bug. Fantastic. I hate this. So now you know why I uh, use Bitwig. So um, I need to use another filter module. Where is it? Here. At 676? Or was it just me being stupid? No, it's not doing anything. But this one is. Yeah, so we have another sub base. I hope you can hear it with YouTube. I think it's very low, very low sound. Um, also, we can maybe talk about a little bit of saturation on this channel. Or maybe some EQing or both. Yeah, to make this a good kick drum with a lot of bottom end. Please let me have a quick look at the chat. Um, No real questions over here. Neptune is sleeping, by the way, um, on the couch. I'm very sorry. Maybe he will make an appearance later. <laughs> um, okay, so we now have a kick drum. Fantastic. Uh, also, I would like to, to have a little um, bass sound going on. So I want... Can delete this? Oh, I didn't save yet. Let me quickly save this arrangement so that I have um, in case something goes wrong here. Um, now we need a bass sound um, for, for this one. So how do we get a bass sound? Um, I think First, we need to get this resonance thing off and get one of the oscillators back to life. Ah, wrong input. Yeah, that's good. Um, 
maybe I make the the base with a triangle in a very oh why do we have this uh -huh. of course I want to have it in tune as you can see I'm a bit sharp here I need to bring it a little bit down Yeah, that's good. Um, but I also want to... That's smooth. Also, we can switch the glide on. That's nice. Let's see how it sounds together with uh, the kick drum. Where's the kick drum? I think I need to... I'm sorry, you didn't see. Um, I recorded a little pattern here. Which is not quite in tempo. So I think I will do it again. Yeah, we need some good loop points here. Of course, not within the waveform. Maybe the loop point needs to be somewhere here. But of course, the start point is still here. Let's see if this works. And then, of course, we need sidechain compression, which means that the kick drum will duck out the, the bass sound so that it doesn't overlap. Kick drum. Yeah, that's nice. Also, we can put the same sidechain stuff on the noise that we recorded before. Just for some, some background stuff. Let's see how it sounds together with the pad, which also needs some sidechain. Not sure about the pad, it will probably change. Before I go to the really, really amazing uh, chords um, that I will make, uh, which will make this whole thing uh, much more interesting. I hope it's not too boring right now. Uh, I feel that it's quite boring. Um, I'm very sorry. So now we need a hi-hat, of course, or a shaker, or maybe a lot of them. Mm. So let's go back to opening the filter. Glide should be off and we need our noise generator. Uh, also switch it on. Oh, that's quite loud. Let me put it down a little bit. So I can change how this sounds with, uh, with the envelopes here. So that will be a nice short 
hi-hat. Let's uh, record a few of them. Mm. Hi-hats. Okay, then also let's record something like this, which will be more like a shaker with more attack. What else can we do for the percussion stuff? Maybe some really short ones as well for 16th notes later. And then I would like to have something like a clap, but I have no idea currently how to do that. So I will just leave it for, <laughs> for the time. Um, maybe I can look. Ah, that would be fantastic. I have to look into my uh, sound chart book and see if I have a clap somewhere here. If there are drums. Um, also, this is very funny. I need to show this to you. Uh, there's one sound called good sound. Why is it not sharp? Good sound. This will be the good sound. Yeah, I would like to see uh, a clap. Mm, we have steel drums. We have... Belts, xylophone, bass drum, trumpet, but there's no hand clap. Yeah, very bad. I will think of something. I want to make a new. Um, ah, there's Ableton. We need a new drum rack here today. And in that drum rack, where are you? Here. I need to insert. Um, what we just recorded. And of course, I will just isolate one, one of those sounds. I think this is good. Uh, for all of them, I definitely need uh, a filter because you see that all the sounds have a very big bottom end. Mm, and that can be problematic for, for the mix, so I will just cut it and have our hi-hat sound. But see how, how great uh, the frequency spectrum um, is all the way up to, to 20k. It's fantastic. So you really have all the frequencies there. Um, I like that. That's very cool. Yeah, uh, we need some, some offbeat hi-hats here. Uh, and then we can put this this shaker thing somewhere in between. Maybe here. And then I made some some of the very short ones. They could go somewhere here.
Let's see if there's something in the chat I would like to talk about. Erwin wants to know, ah, that was already asked. Yeah, 5680 is the serial number. Scottish backfire. Yeah, yeah, we can do we can do all the silly um, sounds from the manual later. Of course, yeah, that would be some some very nice, funny uh, thing to do. If I have no ideas left for live stream, I can recreate the sounds from the original Moog Mini Moog patch book. All right, now let's please go move on to the really really interesting stuff that will make this whole thing um, quite the fun, because this was. What did I do? Uh, this was just, um, yeah, some some basic, basic stuff. But now we will get into the really, really nice uh, territory. We want to build some chords. And the most important thing for that is my tuner module, which I have on the second screen now. So let's switch off the noise generator. Um, we need sawtooths, a lot of sawtooths, so let's start, oh, that's a bit short. Yeah, that is, let me please switch on this guy so that you can see what happens here. I want to be sure that everything is in tune, so I retune this. So this is my first note, the root note. Second oscillator will be the minor third. Oh, interesting. And the last one will be the fifth. And all together we have a chord. In this scenario, it's very important to know one thing, and this also applies to the modern versions of the Moog synthesizers like the Sub-37, and even some software um, replicates this. Don't put all the volumes on maximum, because it will overdrive the filter in a very bad way. So if you plan to have different notes on, on the oscillators, have a nice thing going. I'm not sure if you can see it on this camera angle. They are more like on, on three. It goes from zero to ten and, and they are now on now on three. Let's play with the filter. Now the interesting thing, you see that it doesn't have a release button. It has a tech, decay and sustain on both envelopes. And there's a little knob down here. And if you have this off, the note will immediately disappear. But if you have this on, it will have a release. And the release is always the same time as the decay time. So with a long decay, you have a long release and with a short K you have also a short release. That is good. Um, let's already plan what kind of effects we need on this one. Um, I think for this one um, the good old Color copy will be nice. This is good. And then we also need some reverb, but not too much. Still want this nice synthesizer to 
to sound spectacular, so I don't want to completely drench it in, in reverb. Maybe something like this with some standard setting. Where is my mix button here? Yeah, let's play a little bit with it to see how it feels with the rest of the music going on. Oh, this is nicer with a darker filter. Where are our hi-hats? Oh, that was the wrong one, uh, I think. Yeah. Still not happy with the rhythm. completely on the beat, what I'm doing here. Yeah, I think the the last few were okay. Um, so I will move this guy somewhere here. Yeah, that's good. Let's see how this sounds together. Also, I want to have a little reduced version here. That's not good. Um, I mean, it could be done with sampling to put the individual chords on individual tracks, but I'm not willing to do that right now. Let's see if we have... No, that's not good. Yeah, that could work. That's a good 16 bar loop. Um, now, I need to label this chords one. Now, of course, I want to have a deeper chord. So I will change the octave range to 16. And do something like this with these nice swells. Also, for this one, I definitely need more, um, 
more delay and reverb. Well, that was the wrong channel, I guess. Was it? Where are the effects? Here. It's nice. Also for the reverb a little bit more. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. And this is too big. You can't see. What do you want to see? How I record the clip or the synthesizer? I think you want to see the synthesizer. So, uh, can I move this? Or will it break the stream? No, it won't. I can move this. This is magic. So now I will record some nice um, slow chords into that new channel that I just made. So switch the other ones. Ah, uh, no, that's too confusing. Uh, yeah, I also want to hear what I previously recorded. Sorry, start again. Maybe with some more resonance. sidechain guy from over here. There is a kind of clap or snare that I needed to add. Uh, I feel like I would like to have another hi-hat sound somewhere in between. So let's see what what we have here. Maybe smoothen it out a little bit. Yeah. That was missing. This tiny one at the end of the bar. It's very nice. Uh, the pet sound that I made at the beginning doesn't work <laughs> at all with that song. But yeah, how would I know when I start? Uh, I'm not happy with the other chords. Mm, let's see if I can make better ones. So let's go back to the, the higher range.
Yeah, let's uh, record something here. Mm. Let's see if I can have something better here on that track. Let's uh, have a look at the questions. Sorry for not looking at the chat for quite a while. Um, I need to switch the music off. Sorry, it's too distracting for my brain. Um, uh, your Minimoog may have been built in mid-74 based on the serial number. Thank you very, very much for that information. Very nice. Thank you. Mm, could you tell us what source web page it's... Ah, okay. Yeah, that was a question about this. Um, yeah, the question, could you do the same uh, thing in the VST version? I, I don't want to go into that today. It's not a comparison stuff. Um, you know that I'm very open to all kind of software, okay? Um, usually... Um, I have absolutely no uh, trouble with uh, software at all. I'm not that guy who says, oh, I only need to have the most expensive hardware. Uh, I made a lot of live streams with, with software synthesizers only. Um, and of course, it would probably be, um, from the sound point of view, like 98% accurate. But... This is, I think, a bit different. You notice that the whole workflow was different. I had to record all the voices on, on their own, one after the other, because this thing is just a monophonic instrument and I don't have even a media interface for it. So what matters here is that this is a complete different workflow. Uh, and this is different from a VST plugin. So if I just had like five instances of Diva running, I would have a different track now because the workflow is, is different. But from the sound point of view, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Uh, dum, 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 dum. Are there any questions? Key tracking. Uh, how the key tracking was calibrated? Um, yes, exactly. Uh, there are little screws on the back. I think I have some reference for this in... Oh, I'm sorry. There were some references here in the manual, uh, which I have here. Uh, it says, um, tuning the, the oscillators, maybe it's better to see in the other camera. Um, and, and these holes are in the back of the Minimoke. Um, and there are some, some trimmers to calibrate this. And there's also a little trimmer to calibrate the filter, the filter tracking. Um, so you can uh, repair that. Um, 
do you miss media? Well, the thing is, um, there is CV and gate in in that one, um, and it's possible to plug in these cables, um, and I successfully controlled it with an external sequencer. It's possible. The only thing that does not work is gate because it doesn't have have gate. It has something called S trick, and I need a special cable for that because they didn't build one of these in, but a very obscure connector that I don't have and I will need to to have this connector um, and then sold it to one of these cables and then I can use it with a sequencer at all. Uh, that will be of course amazing to have this thing running on a sequencer. I'm very much looking forward to it but uh, today I just have to play everything on, on the keys. Um, I don't want to have a MIDI kit built in because this for me is a piece of history. It's a 50 year old instrument and I don't want to have any holes drilled into it or any stuff sewed into it so there will no on this one i won't touch it for any um, midi kits but um, like i said i will have some proper cables next time and then uh, i can trigger it with a sequencer yeah um then there was a question if i would um play dub techno in a club um Yes, of course. I, I played a lot of sets actually in clubs, um, also with dub techno music. The sad thing is that most people uh, nowadays in clubs want to have some. Uh, they want they want their faces slapped with the kick drums, uh, and if they enter a club and some guy is playing some 125 BPM dub techno music, they are usually um, not in the best of moods. So uh, yeah, that's why I I was not doing it for a while. Um, Hi hat samples on top of each other with a slide. Ah, that's a very good idea, Vasily. Thank you. Yeah, that could work. Yeah, I will try it later. Last question. So Dunbar wanted something to know with the oscillator. Yeah, the frequencies was um I think I can quickly show it to you. It's uh Yeah. Uh first oscillator was was a D. I'm playing a D on a keyboard, okay? Second oscillator, an F, still playing the D, and the A. So that makes it uh, a D minor chord, just with D, F, and A. All right, I'm starting to uh, bore people to death. Um, I would like to have another um, another chord or pad sound. This time, maybe we also need the nice effects from from this one. And. Why don't I hear anything? Ah, monitor is off. I need some context. That's nice. Oh, sorry. Supposed to move this. 
Yeah, that's great. I need some of those uh, high resonance sounds. Let's record a few. Hello. Hello. That's good. For something like um, a break in that track, I still need some kind of pad. <sighs> but how should I do it? It's a difficult question. Hmm. 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 I would like to have a chord that goes up to the C. Note, note C. No, not not uh, having a bath, uh, taking a swim. No, um, this one. Ah, this is all very much not in tune. Um, okay, let me quickly create. Um, A new chord, uh, which should have the keys F, A, and C. So this one should be an F. Looks good. And then... Maybe we can do some pulse. pulse stuff. Or triangle. <laughs> it sounds immediately like Kraftwerk Autobahn. I have to be careful so that we don't get a copyright strike on this one.
Mm -hmm. So let's pretend we have something like a break. It would be very easy to to cheat here with um funky effects like where's this new one from Arturia? Uh I think this one could be interesting for this kind of purpose. It's a nice chorus effect or something something similar. Ah, look who's here! Ah, yeah, Neptune. Of course, you first need to switch off the sound. Yeah. Hello, Neptune. Neptune, we can't see you if you are here. Hello, Carter. Where was I? I wanted to have a little pad going on here. And of course, for that, we need some nice um, delay. And a little bit of reverb, maybe. Oh no, not not that one. Um, where is my Magnus X reverb? It's here, I think. All right. Let's record some filter sweep stuff for something that could be a break later. Sorry, I can't really work because this friend here wants some attention. I think you're all fine with uh, interrupting this. By the way, did I show you my new um, studio setup yet? Uh, you see that I have my 19 inch rack here in the back, uh, which makes it much easier to uh, connect all the synthesizers before I needed to to have all the cables running through the table, which was uh, uh, yeah a horrific pain with all the cables going on. Then I also have a new plant. This one. Yeah. Neptune. Did you have a good sleep? Yeah. Neptune was also uh, outside a lot. We have good weather here, so he he enjoyed having uh, some some time. No, not on the push. No, 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 nein, 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 nicht hier drauf gehen, Neptune. Nein, geh doch mal da in die Richtung. Uh, yes, there's a microwave. Uh, microwave one, revision A, in in the rack. We can do something with the rack synthesizers uh, another time. And um, there are some some cool synthesizers in there. Also. Um, Matrix 1000, uh, some Emu Pro Toys, very nice uh, synthesizers. I wanted to record um, a nice pad, so let's do it. Maybe another one, I didn't like the first one.
And for the end, one octave lower. And then we are good to go. Yeah, fantastic. I think I will try to... Ah, oh, this one can go to the trash. Goodbye. I think I uh, need to label everything properly. Um, uh, this. So that we can have something like an arrangement maybe going on. Now the fun thing is in Ableton it's so painful to transfer something from the clips to the arrangement. So if you always wanted to know how I do this, um on Neptune. It's your good. Uh you can see it now. Um how do I change? Let's have a look. I think this is a fantastic sound to to start with. So uh I have it here on the mouse and then I hit the tap button on the keyboard and then I can throw it on on the right channel i hope at least also do we need something else start with ah oh, this is a beautiful beginning for a track i would say if i may say so then maybe one of the other chords And then we can have um, mm, yeah we will do some smoothing smoothing out all the stuff uh, later of course maybe we want the noise at the beginning But of course we wanted to fade in. I'm always using the, the utility for fades, okay? Uh, I'm not using um, the, the volume faders because later when I want to change the mix level, uh, it's painful. So I'm rather using the utility for fades. Um, yeah, so let's bring this in. Not sure if this is too sudden. But maybe it's okay. We could place the hi-hat here. What happened here? Hello. Now lost track of the actual music. Um, let's have this going on for sixteen bars and then. We can have our chord number three. Hi-hat. 
No, we don't. Where's the other hi-hat? And maybe this is a good way to bring in the next uh, hi-hat pattern to have uh, two bars of no kick drum here. Let's come back. Yeah, there's quite a minimalistic vibe to it, which I think is a good idea with music like this. I think we could try to make a break here by Yeah, and in the break I want the hi hats and um also the base to no not the base the hi-hat should slowly disappear so what i'm doing now is i'm taking another utility it should go away within the first four bars so i'm getting uh this guy here and this guy there and then we should be fine And also the base needs to go away. We will do some automating of the delays soon, which will be fun. Yeah, Jürgen, that's a very good idea. Jürgen, uh, yeah, you could do that, but I didn't. Um, Jürgen in the chat asked, uh, I could copy all the clips over to the arrangement view uh, and from there sort it out. Yeah, that's possible. It's probably quicker. Um, usually I have two screens. Um, today it's a bit, uh, when I live stream, I have only one screen for you. So this is complicated, but um, there's my main screen and here's my second screen. So usually I would um, have one screen here, one screen there, and then drag the stuff over. Um, I have an idea in my head how this break is supposed to play out. Unfortunately, uh, it takes a while to to do it in, in real time. So what I want is... Um, where's this nice... Uh, yeah, this one. We need this one. So what I want to do is I want to go crazy on the automation um, of... If you wonder what I'm doing, here's my push controller. Uh, what I want to do, I want to go crazy on the feedback here. Um, so let me... Hello, Neptune. I want to activate the automation recording and then record some automation. Is it working? No, it's not. Why isn't it recording? Hello. That's so great. Uh, five months of uh, not using Ableton and now I forgot how to record automation. Am I that stupid? 
What's going on? Hello? Ah, okay. Strange. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do it again. Um, so what I want to do is to play with the feedback to get more because it gets louder I want to compensate with the mix Yeah, that's nice. Uh, also, I need to bring it back to whatever it was before. I think something around this one. And the mix was... What's happening here? Ah, oh, nothing. The mix was about 51. Okay. Uh, also, something similar should be done to this one. Hmm... Ah, that was wrong. Uh, now I killed the track. Sorry. Yeah, these long sounds are not so good for be quiet uh let's take this one instead i think here we could work with with the automation instead mm. am i on the right path yes i am um... yeah that works The trick is to reduce the mix ratio a bit because this overdrive stuff gets really loud. So you need to compensate for it. Great. Mm. Here with the automation, I'm bringing it all back to what it was before. And now I can go and bring, bring the other stuff back. But I will do it in... Let's see. Perfect. <laughs> it's now 36 bars, which is... No, does it make sense? No, it doesn't. It should be 32. Yeah, 
maybe like this. It, it needs some fine tuning, of course, and uh, yeah, I will probably get back to this track in a few days and do all the the hard work, which is um, doing the fine tuning. Also, you see that sometimes I'm delaying or being a bit too early with with the new sound, so it doesn't um, no, I have to start this again. Usually you bring stuff in and out after 8 bars, after 16 bars, and this can be very monotonous after a while, and so sometimes I try to have it a bit late or early with, with the new sounds. Let's give this nice sound a few. Yeah, that's also nice. People will think that there is a new break, but there isn't. We can also reuse the pad for the outro part of this tune. Neptun, gefällt es dir? Yeah, this is a bit too loud for not being... What's happening here? Where is the hi-hat? Ah! There is the hi-hat. Uh, what I wanted to say is um, that the, the pad is a bit too loud now when all the rest of the music is playing, so I'm using my utility to um, bring it... Screw it. Uh, bring it down. Here. Yeah, that's better. And I think it's time for the final break here another 16 bars now well, let's make it 8 bars um Yeah, uh, I need another round of delay automation in this little mini break here right at the end. How do I do this? Automation and overwrite, I hope. This is a bit big. Good. Make it smaller. Mm. So for the final round, Yeah, this is good. Um, uh, the question why Ableton this time? Um, because I knew that this was uh, a complicated thing to do. It looks very fast and uh, easy, but um, all this automation stuff and slicing the samples in, in the drum rack, this is something that I didn't do a lot in Bitwig yet. Uh, I worked a lot with MIDI 
stuff in Bitwig with sequencing synthesizers, but this is more a job with a lot of audio tracks and a lot of sampling. And I felt more comfortable doing that with Ableton. Um, so that is the question uh, here. Uh, we didn't break up. It's just something I wanted to do with Ableton today. Let's listen to that final break at the end of the track. <laughs> Stay this well, thank you. Yes, I will completely recreate the mini moke in Bitwig tomorrow. Um, problem here. I copied the clip from before, so I also have this uh, crazy feedback stuff going on here as well, which I don't want here. Go away. Okay. Uh, also, I had the idea to increase the mix of the reverb here before the hi-hat goes away. Let's see how this sounds. But then it needs to be... taken out by decreasing the volume. So it's basically a fade out <clears throat> with more reverb in it. At the end of tracks like this, I like to have the kick drum without the bass. Ah, now we have a problem. Um... I still want the sidechain to happen, so I need to mute the kick drum with the utility instead of deactivating. Ah, it's still not working. Why? Because it's probably, yeah, post effect, pre effect. So now the kick drum should be muted here with the utility. But we still have the sidechain thing going on. I should probably have done the same thing here. Where did it start? Here. No. No, 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 not like this. So that we still have the side chain going on. Uh, also here. Tick. But not in the break. In the break, we don't, well, we want side chain. All right. That is already. Almost two hours. This is crazy. No one will ever watch two hour. Oh, there are a lot of people watching it. Thank you for staying with me um, for such a long time. Let's have a quick look at the chat. Um, if there's something 
I need to answer. No, there's no problem today. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Um, so thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, seeing my new mini moog in action. Also, Neptune is um, closely observing the mini freak here. Mm. He really likes uh, these blinking lights. He is always um, sitting here and seeing what's going on there. I will play through this whole thing again for one time so that we can uh, listen and enjoy the, the whole track that was um, made today. Wasn't there a special key for this? Yeah, perfect. Um, keep in mind, all sounds in this track are from the Mini Moog synthesizer. This guy over here. There's not a single sample or anything that is not from the Mini Moog. All the effects I used were Yuhi Color Copy, Valhalla DSP Delay, Valhalla DSP Vintage Verb, Valhalla DSP Room, and the Saturia, I forgot how it's, what's the name, this kind of chorus thing, and a few stock plugins from Ableton. So enjoy the track. Thanks a lot for being here tonight. Have a good day. And see you next time.
yeah, this is it for tonight. Um, I added some little changes to the track while it was running. Um, I switched to my monitor speakers and switched off my headphones, so I had a different perception of the kick drum and I felt that it needed some more weight. So I added Presswerk from Yuhi. There is a little preset in there for drums. Uh, I'm not, not really sure what it actually does, but it always adds a lot of deep volume to kick drums, which I like. So I, yeah, added this for the kick drum and some minor arrangements. Uh, things as well yeah so thank you very much for being here tonight with my little friend the mini moog also with neptune who is exactly here out of camera focus but he's also yeah very interested in the moog synthesizer see you next time um i think i will have a live stream next weekend as well let's see if that is actually true yes Yes, there will be a live stream next Sunday. Uh, no idea what I will do there. Maybe um, I promised to do a Mini Freak session. So maybe we'll have Mini Freak only next week. Not sure. Thanks a lot.